Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us today here on the Tips for a Successful Speaker Proposal. My name is Dwayne Haliance. I'm the chair of the IEM Conference Committee, and I am joined today by Krista Lopez, Tony Hauser, Chris Donegan, Julie Huss, and John Osborne. If you could all start with Krista, just say hello. Hi, everyone. This is Krista. Happy to be here. This is Tony Hauser. Good afternoon or good morning, everyone. This is Chris Donegan. Hello, everyone. This is Julie Husk. Welcome. And playing the role of John Osborne will be doing Haley Dance. Hi, everybody. My name is John Osborne. I am with ESME. Anyway, so Krista, Tony, and, and Chris are our vice chairs. Julie and John work uh, with us through ASME. So during the webinar today, we will cover the admission, submission process, I'm sorry, the conference committee's expectations for your submission, and then give you a quick tutorial on the online submission portal to help you out. Uh, our big goal today is to develop the best program for our conference, and we recognize that it's the speakers that give us a successful conference. So the, the, uh, the more speakers we get, the better speakers we get, the better presentations we get, that's what makes our conference a success along with all the other things we do. Uh, one of the things I wanna emphasize early is that you need to be creative, right? Use your imagination, creativity when you're when you're thinking about these presentations. You know, giving a presentation is um, is about education, but it's also a little bit about entertainment, right? Think about um, tasks that we as professionals maybe never thought of as in our lane of travel, which now are firmly on our plates as we see looking around the nation and around the world. We can develop a bunch of ideas and education based upon these uh, items and others that us as emergency managers are being tasked to accomplish in our roles. Uh, but be unique, right? Be unique in your thinking, be that, that black swan that we all heard about and know about. So at the end of this, uh, this is being recorded as you heard. It will be shared with everyone who registered. It usually takes a couple days uh, to get it registered, uh, or I'm sorry, to get it out to you because it takes a little while to process. So um, the other thing that's important is that we welcome all your questions. So as we're going through the slides, um, take some time if you have a question to type your, your question into the question box. Uh, and then Julie and John will be monitoring that. If we haven't answered your question during the presentation, at the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions and any other questions that, that might come to your mind at that time. But um, I'm also going to very much uh, encourage you to reach out to us. So again, that's all of us. That's that's the myself, that's the vice chairs, and Julie as our, our conference director. Uh, we are here to help you. We are here to help you succeed, and we are here to help you get on uh, the, the podium or, or to get into the, the conference as a speaker. So, and um, to help you out with that, on the very last page uh, will be our contact information. So, uh, IRM and our conference committee is no longer just the annual conference, as you may recognize if you've been with us for a little bit. So we are certainly about education, training, networking, and it's a it's a 12 month a year thing, right? Like we don't just do our job uh, a couple of days a year. So we have a year round opportunities for you. So as you can see, we have uh, three opportunities to speak. Plus, we're always looking for ideas for webinars during the course of the year that we can give to our membership and our attendees. And uh, because, you know, how else are we going to continue to help the profession? So you see there you have the annual conference, which we know is in Colorado Springs in November. We have the early edition speaker series, which is the four weeks leading up to the, the conference. And it's virtually and it's every Tuesday and Thursday. And then um, we have IEM plugged in, which is our virtual conference. And you see there it says 2025. That's because 2024's conference, which will be coming up April 18th and 19th of this year, is already planned. So when you're submitting uh, to speak, there's going to be check boxes uh, in the speaker agreement and the submission form to select which speaking opportunity you're submitting. You can select any one of the three, all three, two of the three, whatever works for you, however it works best. Again, um, whether you want to speak virtually or live at the annual conference or um, or regardless, you know, you, you don't care. Like if you want to do it virtual or at the annual conference, whatever works for you. This helps us a lot as we're going through the speaker selection process. 
uh, again, maybe maybe you won't be able to join us in Colorado's, but that doesn't mean you cannot you know speak at, at one of our virtual opportunities or the early edition or the virtual conference in 2025. So again, live outside yourself, think about what is best for you. So everybody, this is the main speaker page on our annual conference website. Um, I encourage you to visit this site. It has a lot of helpful information. It has some tips. Um, it explains everything that we're explaining here today um, in further detail and has all the dates and everything that you would need. Um, the web address for the conference website is iaemconference.info. And you can find this by clicking on the speaker tab in the top navigation panel. The recording of this webinar, as Dwayne mentioned, will be available and posted um, after the recording is uh, taken care of, and that will be posted here on this page as well. So if you're looking for a copy of this recording, it'll be on this page. The left-hand panel on this page has clickable tabs to help you navigate to more speaker information. Um, currently, there is information on the breakout speaker information page. And then in the next couple months, we'll have information available about a poster showcase, the EM Vision Talks, um, and then the call for speakers opens in March for our poster showcase and in April for the EM Vision Talk. Wayne, do you want to cover this page or would you like me to cover it? I am muted, so I should not talk for five minutes while I'm mute. So that was a test. Thank you, Krista, for that very much. Uh, on, the, <laughs> on the breakout speaker information page, you'll find the benefits and the responsibilities of being a speaker, including unmuting yourself when you talk. And um, it covers topics such as registration, final slide document review, submission deadline, and also CEM credits. I also want to mention that I think it's important that everybody recognizes uh, if you were at our conference last year, many of our um, plenary speakers came from uh, folks that, that put in to be a breakout speaker. So sometimes we look at some of the, the sessions that are put in for a breakout session and we go, man, this is so important. We got to get it on the main stage. Uh, that other opportunity that Chris talked about that we'll talk about in a little bit here, also EM Vision, obviously, you get on the main stage. But if you're selected for one of the virtual speaking opportunities, Many of these same benefits and responsibilities apply, including speaker registration, certification credit, speaker liaison to work with you as you develop your presentation, which is very important. We do have people that will help you go through the process to make sure that you have everything you need. If you're chosen to speak at the 2025 virtual conference, your deadlines will be a little later in the year than obviously for the annual conference. This does not mean, of course, that you cannot submit earlier, but you're not held to the same deadlines obviously, as we have a couple more months to prepare for that. This can be of help to you, especially if you have updates uh, coming in for your presentation. If you're working on something, some research, whatever, that, that, is, that is constantly being updated, it'll help you out with that. The speaker submission guideline is hyperlinked on this page, and it is your key and a absolute must read for all speakers looking to submit a successful speaker proposal. I encourage and urge you to review the guidance. It was developed by the conference committee to provide all the requirements and tips for successful speaker submission. Many of your questions can be answered by reading this guidance, no matter which speaking opportunity you're submitting for. Uh, we're asking for all the same information. Again, we go through every year this speaker guidelines and we're constantly updating it to help you out in your submission. So please take some time to read that. Including the guidance, guidance are steps to navigate the online submission portal, which Julie will show you here briefly and a listing of all the required fields in the online submission form, which is also important. We suggest highly before you submit your proposal online, you gather all the information needed and draft the information fields with character limits in a Word document to ensure your proposal fits within the character limitations. So, you know, get on, get, on, get it on a Word document, look at it, make sure it's going to fit in the, in the box before you go to submit it. Many of the issues that speakers in the past have encountered when submitting the proposal is inputting that information that exceeds the character limits. Remember, uh, just because it says you have X amount of characters doesn't mean you have to completely fill the box. Uh, oftentimes, less is more, right? And, and it makes it a little bit easier. So 
please, for your own peace of mind, draft your proposal and word document first and verify the word count is within these limitations for the required field. When checking the word count, this is important also, select character limit numbers, including spaces, as required by the online submission form. Drafting first and verifying the word count with spaces will make the submission process smoother and quicker for you. Uh, so our deadline for submissions is February 16th, um, and it won't be extended. So please plan accordingly. Um, don't wait until the deadline to submit. Uh, please get it in early, uh, avoid the rush, and submit something that helps you stand out from the crowd. Uh, due to the large number of submissions, and our limited session slots, even submissions that score well may not be accepted. So bring your A game and put all of your effort into submitting one really high quality submission. Um, May 1st is the date that all accepted speakers will be notified uh, that, uh, that they were accepted. Uh, all of our speaking sessions are 60 minutes long, and that includes time for questions. So we recommend planning for 45 minutes for the presentation and reserving 15 minutes at the end for a question and answer period. Uh, it's important to note that anyone who submits a presentation proposal must comply with our no logos policy. Um, we understand that some organizations might not agree with that, uh, but we really um, want to emphasize that the IAEM conference program is a platform for professional development and earnest learning, and it's not for uh, sales or marketing. Uh, if you do have a product or service that you would like to sell, we would recommend reserving space in the EMAX exhibit hall at the conference. Uh, so all speakers will be assigned to a speaker liaison. Um, speaker liaisons are members of the conference committee and will be the primary contact before and during the conference. During the conference, they introduce the speaker and the session uh, with the information uh, and introduction that was provided in each of the submissions. Uh, the speaker liaison will also be a timekeeper for the session and um, alert you if needed when uh, time is running out, you're getting to the end of your allotted time slot. So the conference committee requires presentations that are specifically developed for the IAM annual conference audience and for the current year theme, which this year is emergency management ascending. Uh, <clears throat> this theme is for both the annual conference and the 2025 virtual conference. However, it should be noted that this is not a limiting factor. Um, these are big picture concepts. Remember uh, what Dwayne had said earlier, they need to be creative, and thinking about unique things of how, how we're doing it and not just everything that we've just done in the past. Um, we've all been to sessions on reunification, which are important, but for instance, what about reunification that is not a school event? Um, how do we handle these events? It's really about thinking outside the box and being creative. This helps us bring in the diversity of ideas we were talking about in this second bullet point as well. The theme, uh, for this year, um, while it's important to to use it for your your breakout session, it it doesn't need to be in your presentation title. Um, every year, it seems that we have a lot of submissions that have really really long titles because the the conference theme is added to the title, um, and that's not needed. Um, and it actually there's a lot of times we'll be asked the speakers to shorten their title just to make it more attractive. Um, 
Each year we provide the latest information and best practices in education, training, and leadership for the entire profession and those allied professionals to attend our conference. We strive to have the very best conference with the best speakers presenting the widest range of topics, which assist in educating everyone from the student to the new emergency manager, from the new leaders to the seasoned veterans. Whether an attendee is coming for the first um, for the first conference or this is their 25th, we want to always provide the best possible experience. One that is new, engaging, and refreshing to the attendee. We need to study the past, live in the present, and be prepared for whatever the future hands us. <clears throat> Whether you are an emergency manager or an attendee in a related or collaborating profession, the sessions IAM offers cover the entire spectrum of what we do and what we are expected to do every day in partnerships with our community and collaborations with our community partners. Some of the topics uh, and areas of consideration can be found in the link on this slide, um, but do know that this is, should not limit your submission. You need to, again, use your creativity and imagination when submitting. The online speaker submission portal is linked to the IAEM database. To submit a proposal for a breakout session, you need to log in to IAM.org. Uh, you do not need to be a member to log in. Um, you do not need to have an account to log in, but you will need to create an account if you've never done anything with IAM before, uh, meeting a conference, attending a webinar, or anything like that. Um, just so note. So on the home page, when you get to that, after you log in, click on your dashboard to get to the speaker submission portal. You do not need to be a member, I just said that, to submit a proposal. Um, You'll be logging into the online portal and walking through step-by-step step later in this pre presentation. The call for speakers opened um, last uh, Friday, the 12th, and it will close on Friday, the 16th at 11.59 Central Standard Time. So as they mentioned earlier today, do not wait to the last minute. A lot of times people do that and you get crunched for time and all of a sudden time's up. And as we mentioned, we don't extend the deadline. Um, all, if you read the speaker guidance, it has everything you need to gather before you make a submission. So I suggest, as they mentioned, to read it. It tells you the character limitations for every single field. Um, it helps you prepare and it won't take as long as we actually go through and start putting your information into the online portal. One thing to note, there's not a save function. So it's important you set aside some time to allow to enter all this information. Also, if you keep your portal open, you start you start ending in sub stuff, and then you walk away for several hours, it might time out. Um, so if you notice that it's acting kind of funky and not, you may need to log back in and, and yeah, so try to gather all that information ahead of time and sit down and do it. And it really doesn't take that long if you do it that way. Um, like I said, there's not a save function, so if you start it and you don't finish it and the time's up, um, unfortunately, they will not be considered. So here we have some of the main information that is needed. Um, we're going to hit on these main topics again. We really recommend you draft your proposal in a Word document and check the character limits prior to logging into the submission portal. I can really uh, want to hit on that because a lot of the things that have been seen in the past is just because the, the character limit was actually hit and so it just cuts off your submission. This will save you time and will hopefully lead to less frustration. Um, also to reiterate, 100 characters is still a very long title, so please be creative and judicious. Um, all the required fields and their character limitations are listed in the speaker submission guidance, which we've talked about. You can also log into the speaker submission portal to view all the required information without submitting a proposal, as we've already mentioned. Then when you're ready, go back and enter in all the information. Um, keep in mind, and we're gonna hit on this again, there is no save function, as Julie mentioned. So draft it in Word and keep it off to the side. This will save you some frustration on uh, the submission.
So today we've provided you guidance for you to use. We also recognize that everybody has different skill or comfort level in speaking. We take that into consideration and account when we do our reviews. So for those of you who've never spoken on the national stage, think about reaching out to one of us as you prepare your submission. The better chance of you getting selected is checking with others, getting your submission reviewed, um, talking to folks that maybe have presented in the past to get their feedback as well. The last two items concerned are, are concerned with those who are accepted. As you consider putting a proposal together, know that if you are selected, a member of the conference committee will work with you to develop your session. Your liaison will also do a review of your slides to ensure that you meet all of our standards. If you get selected, we may ask you to focus on a variation of your proposal or to collaborate with someone else if there's a popular topic or you both are um, submitting to, um, on the same topic. We pride ourselves on the level of uh, personal attention and, we respect, and the respect that we give to our speakers um, all the way from the start to the end. We do want to emphasize that new speakers are welcomed and all speakers will receive support in developing their presentation. The speaker's submission is chocked full of helpful tips and covers all the requirements for a successful submission. Remember to double check your proposal for typos before you submit. We are a professional organization and expect work product that is professional and a finished product. So as mentioned, you know, our committee each year has been fortunate to have many, many great submissions and we look forward to the best of the best while also looking for as much uh, diversity in content and thought uh, as possible, right? To reach the largest audience. So the goal of the conference committee is to make sure that all stakeholders that interact with emergency management can come and find educational information and content at the conference uh, to meet their needs, right? Doesn't matter what you do in the, in the profession, we wanna make sure that we have opportunities for education and training for you. I think the third point uh, here is so important, right? Just remember, you have a story and you need to tell it, and we wanna hear it. Um, I've given and listened to a lot of presentations over the years, and I've discovered that those have been received, the best ones are the ones in which the story is compelling, interesting, and even entertaining to a point. You know, no one wants to be lectured. All you have to do is ask my students. Also, it is important that you understand that if you wait until the end, it's, it's you know, in your rush to put in for a proposal, it's not going to be your best work, right? Uh, as my students, it's pretty simple to, to figure out who worked on a uh, assignment early and who waited till the end, right? So uh, you have something, you have a story, you have knowledge, you have the capability. Uh, make sure we see it in your submission. I do want to mention one other point that, that Krista talked about. Um, you know, we try to make sure that we give as many people uh, opportunities to speak as possible so that we just don't have the same speakers year in and year out. We have a spreadsheet, we track it, we check it, uh, we try to make sure that that we're given opportunities and again that we are across the profession in every area possible. So uh, please, please, please uh, submit and submit early. All right, so for those selected speakers, we will provide an IAM slide template to use for their present for the presentation at the conference. Uh, logos will be allowed on the first and last slides of your presentation only. Uh, in the first slide, you will insert the title of your presentation in the speaker or speakers' names. Last slide will have your contact information, and that'll allow the audience to reach out to you uh, after the presentation. The slide template template is required and it must be used by all speakers. Um, for those selected for IAM plugged in virtual conference in 2025, that slide template will be provided next year, so January of 2025. Once again, we are strict about using the slide template and only allowing speakers to insert company logos on the first and last slide. We cannot allow speakers to use the IAM conference as a platform to promote their company or organization. Of course, someone in, in the audience right now is probably wondering how the logo rule applies if the proposal is about a program or a unit with a spe specific logo, like America's Preparathon. If, if this is you, please make sure you talk to one of us so we can advise accordingly. With that, Julie will now take us through a live demonstration of submitting a breakout proposal. 
All right, folks, let me switch screens here. All right, so I am now logged into the IAEM database. And this looks like everybody else's to some extent. Some people have a little more things to it. But down here on the bottom line, there is a header called speaker submissions. And this is what you'll look for on your dashboard. You'll click this speaker submission it's actually a hyperlink here. It takes you to a portal, um, which is our speaker portal. You have two choices. One is you can submit a speaker proposal on behalf of yourself. The other one is you can submit it on behalf of somebody else. I'm gonna go on behalf of myself. So it pulls up if, because I'm already in the database, as you are also by when you log in, it will pull up all the information that is in the database about myself. There are required fields that have a red asterisk by them. If this information is not in there, um, that means it didn't pull from the database, you need to complete it here in our form. And if you scroll down, it has the various information, your content information and so forth. Um, we asked for social information. This is optional if you want to give it, so we can use that as far as um, sending things out, uh, tagging you, and, and various social media things we do if you're selected as a speaker. The bio that will pull in here, and this is just a bunch of next up uh, jumbled nothing here, but if you um, if your bio was old and you something that you had in there from prior years, take a look at it. Um, it may need updating from what you had done in the past. Um, all the fields will have character limits at the bottom. It tell you how many characters limits there are. In case you forgot, you didn't have the guidance up, it will show you here as well. Um, when you're done with it, you can click next here on the bottom left, bottom right, sorry, I know my directions. And it will take you to the next, um, the next uh, page. So you, yours will automatically pull up the 2024 breakout speaker submissions. The next field is the interest area. You need to click on this downward carrot and select one. We have about 20 in here that you can select from that pretty much covers almost every area in emergency management. If you don't find one, you think that it's like kind of like the main topic of your submission, we do have an other category that you can select. So then you put your title. Again, it has character limits on it. You fill in your abstract. Um, we ask for takeaways, what the audience will get out of your presentation in here as well. An intro, this is always a, a tough one for people. Um, the intro is going to be read by the speaker liaison. If you are selected at the live conference or at the virtual conference before your presentation starts, it should not be a, a redo of your bio. It should be very short because we really don't want to have the liaisons up there speaking and taking away valuable time from your presentation. It should be something that kind of briefly touches on the topic you're going to talk about and also gives a, a very quick overview of yourself. Very short, um, it has a character limits. We say if it's one speaker, 600 character limits, including spaces. That's not much, folks. So just very short, touch the main thing. You'll go into it through your presentation more and about yourself. They can read your bio on the program, so you don't need to rehash all that. So just keep in mind, it's being read by somebody else. So a lot of people kind of miss that one. Um, audio, visuals, audio visual in the room. It tells you what's provided. We do not have internets in the room. So if somebody is trying to log into internet, it's not gonna work. Um, if you have a video that's on internet, we ask you to download it and embed it in your in your PowerPoint. Don't think you can click around and go to Google or Chrome or whatever and try to um, to pull that link up and do it. Um, there is an optional video link. If you have a, done a past presentation and you've video yourself and you want to help that enhance your selection process, you can put the video link to that so you can see what your presentation style is. Um, if you have additional speakers. Um, you can click on this next one. So click next and it'll pull to additional speakers. If you don't have it, you can just skip over this section. Uh, but if you do, you want to go ahead and add them here. Now, when you click on the add additional speakers, it will pull up 
a, um, a set of fields that need to be filled in. There's two ways to do it. One is you can fill it on in yourself or you can search for people. If you think this person is at I am, I would recommend anyway searching period because if you don't, you're gonna create a whole nother record for this individual. And then that kind of messes things up for them because then they have two records with I am. So I would recommend searching and you hit this little um, hourglass here and then you can search by last name, email or organization. If you put something in here, it'll populate various names that are connected with IEM. Like if you put Smith in, you're probably gonna get a bunch. If you put in Toby Smith's email, you'll probably narrow that down. Organizations also very broad um, because depending on your organization, you might find a lot. I would recommend putting an email in and or last name um, because sometimes People may have, you may think they're using their work email with IAM and they may be using a personal email with IAM. So just because their email doesn't populate, it could be that they're using a different email. So if you may not have that information, last name works. So whatever you think is going to work for you, but you can search many different times, different ways to find the speaker. When you do, you then you add them. Um, going back to this, the screen here, it may not have a bio for that person and it may not have some of these fields. So you're gonna to wanna to fill it in if those fields aren't there. We also ask for a presentation experience and speaker references for those speakers as well. And if you do have their social media handles. The next uh, page is additional details. So here, like on the additional speaker page, this is for you. So we're asking for the two most recent relevant emergency management uh, presentations you gave, were date, location, and so forth, all these fields are required. At the bottom, we ask for two speaker references. Um, they, we ask for one from IAM. If you don't have one, that's okay, but we prefer one from IAM. Um, the next page is our speaker agreement. So it has various things that we asked um, you to abide by, like one is, you know, using our slide template. Um, another one is talked about, as we talked about earlier on this call, the three options for what type of presentation you wanna give. Whether you wanna give it for all three events, the in-person, the virtual early edition series prior to the annual conference, and the plugged in virtual conference held in the spring of every year. You wanna submit, that's one selection. The other selection is for in-person only. You only wanna be in-person, you do not wanna do any virtual. That's another selection. And then the third selection is you can only do virtual. You have no, you don't, maybe you prefer virtual, that's your preferred way of presenting. Maybe you can never attend the annual conference. Um, so we give you that option um, to allow those that can never do that or have preferences in the way they present to select that. Um, that gives us an idea, so we're slotting in speakers um, it gives an idea as what we need to do. Now, when you're done with your submission, there's this button down here called preview submission. If you click on it, it will tell you every field, and since I didn't fill anything in except for what came over underneath my profile, everything that's missing. Um, so since, you know, obviously I said I didn't do anything, everything pretty much is highlighted here in red. It will tell you what area. So here's speaker submission information. I didn't put a title in or an abstract, et cetera. It'll tell you the section, subsection that is missing and what, what is missing. Um, sometimes if you if you do things like the bio, the, the field character limit is over, it will tell you you're over the limit. So you're gonna have to go back in and, and edit it down or maybe do it in a side word document and edit it down and copy and paste it back in. But it pretty much is self-explanatory. When you get done and you've cu cured all your errors, this will be a submit button down here instead of a preview button. Um, it will ask you to preview again, actually, when you do correct them, but at the end when it's all done and you hit preview again and you, all your errors are gone, it'll be submit. You'll submit it, it'll be, it'll have a, a pop-up box will show that you have submitted your presentation successfully. You will also get an email that says that you submit a proposal. I'm gonna go back to where we were here.
All right, as we're getting ready to answer your questions, and again, if you have questions, you can type them into that question box and Julie will read them to us. I just wanted to mention a couple of things that we've discovered over the last couple of years that will be helpful to you. Um, oftentimes people may use a work email and then um, as our speaker liaisons reach out to you, your work email, depending where you work, may block them. So if you do have you know, a personal email address, sometimes it works a little bit easier than a work email, something to keep in mind. The other thing that we've noticed in the last couple of years is, um, again, depending where you work, a lot of times you may have somebody submit your proposal for you. Um, that gets a little challenging sometimes for us too, as we have questions. And we're trying to figure out who we should be answering those questions to. And then lastly, I think that's most important, is that you understand that um, this process is, is very open and transparent. We have 60 plus members of the conference committee. And when uh, the three, four, 500 submissions are put in, uh, everybody in the conference committee goes through them and reviews them. And then we break them down smaller into groups. One thing Julie mentioned was that uh, that drop down menu, um, we discovered last year a little bit of a glitch where, where people um, weren't clicking on anything. And then we kept getting proposals that were for uh, subject matter X in the block. And yet the proposal was about something completely different and it was confusing us at first until we figured out that that's what was happening. So, so make sure you take your time. Again, if not saying you can't submit on the last day, lots of people do, trust us, lots and lots of people do. Uh, but, um, you know, the sooner you work on this and, and get it into us, the better. You can also submit more than one proposal, as has been mentioned, but we we say, uh, you know, your, your odds don't go up just because you submit seven or eight uh, proposals. In fact, your odds probably go down unless you're really, really uh, dedicated and really put a lot of work into it. So, you know, figure out what that one best proposal is and put your effort into that. And a lot of times you're you're better off for that. So Julie, do we have questions? Um, yes, one of the questions is, what should be written for the audience size? As far as the audience size of they, they uh, previously presented to? I would imagine that that's the only field that's, that yeah. I mean, you know, if you, if you, you know, were at a local uh, conference or you were, you know, gave a presentation at a college, or even if you were at IM or you were at a state conference, you know, a lot of times we get it that that's going to be an estimate, right? I mean, we, even this year at our plenary, we got asked by some of our plenary speakers, how many people were in the audience? And, you know, we had to kind of take a swag at it. We, we don't count every head in there. So, uh, you know, your, your best guesstimate on audience size for how many people were there. And, and I will tell you that we've seen them where somebody said, I gave a presentation on blah, blah, blah to so-and-so, and there were 10 people. I mean, it's, it's you know, don't discount yourself if it was a smaller audience. Uh, next question is, um, you say that the accepted notification will be announced by May 1st. Does this apply to the virtual conference? And also, does it apply to people that are not accepted? Uh, it, it does apply, correct me if I'm wrong, Julie, to the virtual conference. It usually takes us a little while longer to get out. Uh, we try and get the letters out first to everybody that's accepted. And then as quickly thereafter, we get out um, the letters for those that, that, that are not accepted, which I will tell you is the most difficult thing in the world to do. Again, you know, we had last year about 350 submissions. And because of the size of our conference and the amount of rooms we have, you know, we can only take about 75 presentations. So it's, it's, it's a good thing to have lots of presentations to, to pick from. It's a sad thing that oftentimes we have a lot of people that, that we unfortunately have to say, um, we're not going to use your presentation. I will add to that also that, you know, sometimes we might get, we might get 10 really, really, really good submissions on topic X. Well, we just can't have uh, 10 proposals or 10, 10 breakout sessions on topic X because we're trying, as Chris mentioned earlier, to cover all areas the best we can to make sure that everybody comes to the conference has something that they that you know relates to them. So don't please don't take it personally if 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 you're not submitted. It, it might have nothing to do with how how good your proposal was. It might have something to do with how many we get in any particular subject area. 
Other, go ahead. And the question is, yeah, it says, thanks for sharing this information. Do you pay conference speakers? I don't get paid. Do you get paid? <laughs> That's a joke. The, uh, uh, there is the ability to help people that need financial assistance, but typically we do not pay conference speakers, but the conference speaker uh, does get um, admission to the conference for free. Is that correct, Julie? Anything I'm missing there? Uh, no, that is correct. I just to clarify that. So for the um, annual conference, uh, it's one speaker per session that gets complimentary full registration. The other speakers get a discounted speaker rate. For the virtual conference, all speakers get comped because we need you there. Um, and for the what Wayne was mentioning, the financial support, um, if your organization is, does not, is not covering your travel, is not supporting you in coming to the annual conference, we appreciate that you're still able to come. Uh, I am will provide um, up to $500 of travel support. And that's all um, mentioned actually on that uh, website and also in that speaker submission guidance when you guys take, take a look at that in a little more detail. Uh, let's see what else here. Um, oh, somebody asked about sample presentations. Uh, we don't we don't typically provide what we do provide and Christy you can probably answer this you were this is kind of what we were talking about about the assistance we give do you want to take that Krista sure um when we are when folks reach out to us about um samples or for us to review their presentations um if you've attended IAEM in the past and you have the IAEM to go app you can always reference past presentations um, that are uh, downloadable from that app. Um, if you've registered for our virtual conferences or our webinars in the past, those are recorded just like this one um, and available and, and a link is sent out to you as the attendee. So there are multiple ways that you can um, reference what's been presented in the past. Um, I know it can be intimidating, but we also encourage you to be creative and obviously um, make sure all the content is yours. Uh, next question is, can we submit the same project proposal for both the speaker presentation and a poster? Sure. I don't, I don't see, especially, I mean, posters are, are normally uh, research special projects. Um, you know, sometimes to, to, answer that question. Sometimes people do submit something as a breakout and we don't have enough room at the conference. And sometimes we actually suggest people to, um, you know, make a, a poster if they can, but certainly. Um, next question is, is there a different submission selection process for your keynote plenary speakers? If so, what is that? There is no uh, separate process so we um we look at all the breakouts and again this last year probably was the first time that we took some breakout sessions and made them into plenaries uh, normally the plenary process um you know we we look for something that's appealing across um the field and then we typically will reach out for plenaries so so if you're at the conference last year you might recognize that you know we had the FEMA administrator and the director of CISA there um, we had somebody speaking about what's happening in the Middle East there. So, so um, there's no, you don't submit for a plenary, if that, I guess that is the best, easiest way to put it. Um, another question is, may I know the procedure to have a collaboration with African universities to enhance the knowledge on emergency management? I'm not sure. I, I don't know if I heard the question correctly. Um, May I know the procedure to have a collaboration with African universities to enhance the knowledge on emergency management? Uh, really, we might need to follow up with that person individually yeah. so we understand the question better. Um, maybe if we can get your email address, um, we'd be happy to have a conversation. 
I want to um, make sure I'm answering it correctly. Yeah. Right, I agree, Krista, thank you. Um, part of the submission application is to list previous emerging management presentations. Our experienced speakers who have never presented at an emergency management conference, welcome. Yes, everybody is yes. welcome. Yeah, and Dwayne, I would say, you know, you may not consider presenting to your colleagues, um, but that is a presentation, right? If you've yeah. taken the time to, to put together a presentation that has enhanced people's learning, it doesn't have to be at a traditional emergency management conference. Um, we love our allied professionals. Um, so if you are a presenter um, from, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, engineering space or weather or um, health care. Um, right. So if you're from all these other allied professionals and you've presented to groups in that space, that counts as well. And, and something to, to uh, be mentioned also, Julie, if you don't mind, if you could do the next slide, I'll give our contact information while, while we while we answer these questions. Um, you know, it used to be years ago that um, they wanted, you know, the the you know, the conference committee wanted people to have had uh, experience at a high level before. But in the last several years, we've really taken the approach that, you know, let's give people opportunity. So, um, yeah, um, don't don't discount yourself. Um, you know, we we want to we want to hear from as many people as possible and and have the best possible presentations. Um, we have answered all the questions that are there right now. All right. If there are any other questions, you can put them in uh, to the chat box. And and if not, here's our contact information. Please, when you're if you're emailing any of us or all of us, uh, whether it's me, Chris, Tony, uh, or or Krista, also please always carbon copy Julie. She is the linchpin that keeps us all together here. And so if you're and even if you email me, and a lot of people email me IEM questions, and and I always on my reply, I will add Julie in to make sure that she knows what's happening. She is our, our staff conference director. She is our 24-hour our day, 365-day a year support that really keeps us all in line. So uh, please copy her. But again, if you think of a question later, uh, you just want to reach out to us. As Krista said about the question uh, proposed about the universities in Africa, uh, just reach out to us, or in that particular case, we'll reach out to you if we have your contact information. If there's no further questions, I just want to—I want to go around. I want to thank everybody. Julie, uh, closing comments. Uh, thank you all for joining us. I, Dwayne, I think you summed up enough. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to us. We are more than happy. Our team is phenomenal, and all four of our chairs are will answer any question you have and provide advice if that's something that you desire. So don't be afraid to, to reach out. All right, Krista? Nothing from here, Dwayne, other than review what we've just shared. Um, make it creative, make it inspiring, make it different and unique. And um, for the individual who asked the question um, that we're asking further question, uh, information on, uh, I just sent you an email and copied ever, everyone from our um, chair team. So you should have an email from me uh, right now so we can get some clarification and help you out. Perfect. Tony? Hey, thanks, Dwayne. Um, you know, I, I want to highlight what you mentioned about um, the previous uh, presenting or conference speaking experience and that, that you know, it's not a requirement. Um, uh, I, I think that um, you know, we at IAEM, it's really important that we help uh, develop um, our our members, and part of that is providing opportunities like speaking at conferences. So, if someone doesn't have speaking experience, um, you know, don't don't worry about that, and don't. Um, uh, dis discount yourself. Um, from submitting something, um, you know, we'll we'll help you out. Um, uh, we've got our speaker liaisons who will provide support, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's really important that we um, 
give all give people with all kinds of experience um, an opportunity uh, to be involved in our conferences. Hundred percent. Thank you, Tony and Chris. Uh, thanks, Dwayne. I think everyone summed it up really nice. Um, just looking forward to everyone's submissions and uh, uh, good luck. Um, we'll hopefully maybe see you in Colorado Springs this next year. And just so everybody on this call knows, as I say goodbye, uh, Chris has graciously agreed to move to Colorado Springs. He is there currently waiting for us to show up in November, and he will be the welcome wagon for all of us. So thank you, everybody. Again, if you have questions, you have our contact, reach out to us. And have a great rest of your day, a great weekend, and we hope to see all of your submissions soon, and we hope to see all of you in Colorado Springs.